right, welcome to the Ben Oakey Nursery here behind the scenes at the Huntington. This is where uh, we do our work. This is where a lot of the, the real action in bonsai occurs. And uh, you'll see as we go through the nursery, a lot of things in progress here. So um, again, come on in. Right off the bat here, we've got a couple of, of big shimpakus. Um, the lighting may not show it so well, but we had some heat earlier and this tree really took took a, a, a hit. You can kind of see some of the brown remnants left here. So we've kind of gone and cleaned a lot of the brown out of here. And it's probably going to be next year before this tree is really showable again. But uh, yeah, we had that 117 uh, uh, week again. And, and we, we had a few trees take a bite. Luckily, um, it didn't totally suffer. It will come back good. This is another one that that same thing it took a little bit of a heat you can start seeing all this nice spiky growth up here it's obviously recovering um but again it's going to take a little bit before this starts looking really spectacular again if you want to look down this aisle we've got a, a guava here it actually has a few fruit up in here on it but um that tall hollywood juniper down on the end there uh, i'll point that one out that's a, a tree that um was Dan Robinson's original chain carving demonstration in Southern California it was about 40 some years ago. And um, uh, we had him back in 2013 for a convention where he did the second round of styling on that. So it's got some good history uh, here with Dan. Come down here again, you'll see, uh, if you look that way, We've got two pines. You'll see one, we've done the clean out on it. The other one, uh, we're, we're not quite there yet. One of the things we have to wait for a little cool weather to get to our pine work, uh, cause uh, we get a lot of needle drop. So as, as things harden off and we're able to get to them, we take them in stride. On this side, this uh, is a old liquid amber forest. We just acquired that from Mary Bell Ballandonk. Um, it's been here for just about uh, three weeks now. Just uh, went through its, its uh, pretty foliage turn, but uh, we just cleaned it up the other day. So you can see it's a little leggy, a little wild. We'll get all that under control, um, but nice old, old, old forest here. Here's a tree I'd like to point out. This is actually a pretty unique tree in that it's a Japanese import. When I uh, uh, first came to work here, uh, it turns out we had a sister garden relationship with the Ritsurin Garden in Takamatsu. And so I half-heartedly said, well, how about we do a bonsai exchange? Well, in looking into it, um, we could do that. Uh, the Huntington is actually an, uh, an import location and we had a license, so we worked it out. And so they sent us this very old California, or <laughs> California, old Japanese Shimpaku juniper, and we sent them a camellia. Now, one interesting thing, we this came, it was in quarantine for two years. Uh, a little over a year ago, we brought it out. And uh, last year, we had a convention here in Southern California, and it turns that uh, Mr. Rushibata from Japan was a guest headliner. And um, so we invited him uh, to work on this tree. And so he did the initial styling of it. What was interesting is um, uh, Mr. Rushibata had won the most recent Prime Minister's Award at the professional uh, uh, show in Japan, Kokufuten. And um, the governor of the prefecture where this tree came from was visiting Southern California uh, shortly after the convention. And he came to the Huntington and he specifically asked to see this tree. And so he and his entourage came here and it cr created quite a sensation when I was able to tell him that this tree was then styled by the Prime Minister's award winner from the last year. So that was kind of a proud moment for us. We've got it sitting in this crate because it's, it's, the angle is going to change. And so uh, this spring, we'll, we'll properly get it at its new angle in a, in a proper pot. So we'll be well on the way to realizing his design. But uh, kind of a unique piece that uh, we actually were able to get a, a bone sack exchange with Japan. More pieces uh, as we go along. Um, this tree, again, the angle is a little bit difficult. 
This is also, uh, I think, one of our more spectacular bonsai. This is a, 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 an elm clump from Jim Barrett. Um, this was a tree that uh, was started uh, by cutting back in 1958. Jim was working on one of his other elms and, and as he was taking clippings, um, he put them in little liners and propagated them. Well, in 1960, he had all, this flat of all these little elm cuttings and so he started potting them up. Well, by the end of the day, the story goes, he's starting to get a little bored. So he started just grabbing them by the fist load. And so this is one of his fist plantings, propagated in 1958, planted in 1960. So this, as a bonsai, is a very old piece because it's been under continuous care since 1960. Um, and almost all clip and grow styling, Jim said, through this. So. This also, um, it's on the courts a lot. We just took it off because it was there all year long, but it's, it's again, a real crowd favorite. Here's another Jim Barrett piece. We're going through a quadrant repotting with this. This came to us uh, in soil that was kind of like concrete. And so uh, what we've done is each year, uh, starting in, uh, March of 2018, 2019, 2020, and so this next March we'll do the final quadrant. And uh, we've been slowly, you know, getting uh, the twigging reveal, cleaning it up. So this is also going to be a sp spectacular tree. And part of it is because of the bark. Um, there's about 60 years worth of bark intact on this. And the layers and the delicate sheets are really um, uh, quite, quite nice. Uh, this tree was uh, originally from the Yamaguchi Nursery up in Sanger. Um, Jim got a lot of his uh, early stock from there and, and has developed it in cans in his yard. So uh, again, this is, this is one of those old pieces from that nursery. Go back here a little bit. On this side, again, this may be a little tough to see. But we have a, a pretty famous bonsai here. This is the Hatanaka uh, Hollywood Juniper Forest. Um, again, old planting. This appeared in many bonsai in California magazines. And um, uh, the thing with Hollywoods is their foliage gets so leggy and so long that every once in a while you really have to knock them back hard in order to get them compact again. So. A uh, year and a half ago, this was uh, cut hard, and it's coming back. It's recently been wired out, and we're getting our, our shape back into it. So hopefully this next year, this one will get back on display, because again, it's, it's a very popular bonsai. Back here, we've just got some uh, development grounds, some growing areas. Um, uh, We've got some of Mr. Che's large pinching back here from his per own personal collection. And we're doing projects. We've got some layerings going on here. We've got some layerings go back there. And we've just got some, uh, uh, some of our bigger trees. This is a pretty famous tree. This is the front here. This is a John Naka olive. This is a tree that uh, he collected as a stump from a, an abandoned orchard in Fontana in 1958. So again, this is an old, old bonsai that's been worked on for a long time. <coughs> this guy is due for a new potting this year. It needs to have its soil refreshed. But look at the texture of the bark on that. That roughness of the bark on an olive really only comes when you've had one of these in a pot for a long time. Uh, as, a, as a collected tree, as a, a, a nursery stock, very often there's smooth green bark, but this black pebbly kind of bark only comes with stresses of, of being in a pot for a long time. And the bark texture on this is spectacular. We have a little pinion pine right in front of it. Again, you're kind of looking at the back. That was uh, given to us by Gary Castanola, and he comes and helps us work on it. But uh, pretty rare to see pinion pine as bonsai. Um, and again, this is a pretty nice specimen, pretty old. Um, hasn't been shown yet, um, but it's, uh, it's kind of probably this next year we'll be able to put it out on display. Got a couple other uh, 
again, another uh, 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 big California. This also was donated by uh, Al Nelson. And it was another convention demonstration for us last year. That's also why it's planted in this box. It was planted at a, an odd angle. And so uh, uh, this, this winter, sometime in January, we'll repot this, get it at its proper angle. You can see how well it's doing, just spiking everywhere. So a lot of our stuff is pretty happy for sure. You can see uh, another big bald cypress here. You can see it's going through a color change. It's not quite as pretty. That uh, experienced a little bit of a burn during the, the heat. So there's actually probably you know more brown in here than this really pretty coppery color. You'd like to see this whole tree have that kind of a reddish tone to it. But this is probably not gonna be quite as nice this year. The fluting, the, the veins on this tree, again, stunning. Um, just, just some old, old wood in there. It's got a nice uh, Prostrata raft. Uh, big old raft. Uh, this we acquired as a gift from Linda Vecina. Uh, it was one of her late husband Paul's pieces. And um, so rafts, you know, that's a, a real classic uh, uh, bonsai style. And again, this is really a nice old one. So um, this also is due for potting. We'll pot this in the spring. But this uh, we should be able to get out on display um, this next year. bench right here we have quite a, a, a spectacular uh, Bunjin California juniper this was uh, originally uh, Sherwin Amamoto he was very active in uh, GSPF he's a former GSPF president um, very active in California bonsai but uh, he ended up getting a couple of these Bunjin one of the others went to the collection up in uh, Fresno at Shinzen Garden but uh, we got this one and they're they're really quite stunning stunning uh bunjins in terms of that very abstract trunk shape the way the dead wood uh frames the whole tree and and the way the the foliage mass fills that negative space uh it's it's a wonderful design on this let's walk up this aisle a little bit i'll point out this tree um, this is another tree that uh, was spectacularly engineered. This is a tree that was originally donated by uh, Bob Kenosha. Well, uh, up until a couple of years ago, this wonderful twisty folded trunk in here, as it came up to about here, all of a sudden it just went up straight and all the branches just went out straight. So it almost looked like a very amateur tree from that point. Well, uh, once again, Tom Vaughn created this uh, method for cold steaming. So what we did is we applied his, his process to the trunk from this point going all the way up. And with that process, we were able to crank this from being vertical 11 and a half inches all the way down here. And then we were able to put this movement, that movement, every bit of that movement was then subsequently put in um, as this tree was designed. So we've got it heavily reinforced, but yeah, this tree too. Now the top of this tree has the drama and the placement to match the drama and the placement of that lower trunk. Um, that transformation made this from a, a, an interesting tree to a truly spectacular bonsai. This will be one, it, it's really never been shown. Uh, I'm so anxious that this next year, hopefully get it on display because the, the lower part of the trunk, I think, again, is as nice as you'll see anywhere. Let's point out this guy, too, because this is a little bit of an unusual tree. This is a scrub oak. Uh, traditionally, scrub oaks are, are kind of seen as a very short-lived bonsai. Well, this is a bonsai that's been around for 60-plus uh, years. We actually have a picture of uh, uh, the owner of this tree, uh, Ted Iwaki, with his son, Steve, um, when it was on display at a bonsai show where Steve was just a young boy and the tree was much smaller. We also have a picture after it came here 
with Steve and his over 100 year old dad where again now Steve was much taller than his dad and the tree had grown up but to have a scrub oak uh, survive in a pot for uh, this long very unusual so so this also is due for a repotting this year you can see a little bit of brown leaf up in there but the buds are just fat and plump and and so again uh, with a, a refreshment of the soil this tree will really uh, take off and be revived this year but again very unusual to have something this old of this species um, around this long Why don't we go over to the other side and point out a few things there. All right, this is the second part of our bonsai nursery. Um, and you'll kind of see that maybe there's uh, a few things in, in process here. You'll also see this is where we keep our shoheen. And we also have a few benches uh, for Mr. Che's Penchin collection here too. So there's still a little bit of a mixed bag of things. If you come and look this way, I'll point out a group of trees right here. Um, there are opportunities in collections to make improvements uh, in, in the art. So this group of trees was actually originally two separate forest plantings. But the, the, the plantings were, they were just big trunks together. There was really not much design. Um, it was one of those situations where the soil had kind of caused some problems. So we took them, the, the plantings apart and we've been working on them for a couple years. This, this next year, I plan on putting this together as a uh, seacoast forest scene. I think these dramatic uh, swooping branches and uh, uh, you know the proportion of all this I think it could be quite a spectacular piece and so um, I'm, I'm going to exercise some ego and save that project for myself here. If you come down this way you will see um, one of our more famous bonsai as well this is Goshen 3. So this is uh, the third planting of John Naka's famous uh, forest, Goshen, that's in uh, the National Arboretum. It turns out that um, uh, once that forest left California, uh, folks here were a little bit disturbed that all our treasures were going. So, so what happened is at two subsequent conventions, John created two more versions of this, one that resides in Northern California and this one that resides at the Huntington. This tree uh, or forest also went through a transformation. Um, some poor soil uh, caused some problems with some trunks. So we disassembled it. We grew individual trees and individual pots to strengthen root systems for a couple years. And then in 2019, uh, Jack Sustick, the retired director of the National Arboretum, came and we made an event at a California Bonsai Society show of the reassembly of this. And it turns out that uh, Jack was involved in the creation of all three Goshins. And so he was a perfect person to come and, and lead this. Uh, we've been working to refine the pads. We had some development because we had some replacement trees, but this is uh, turning out to fill very nicely. And again, this year, We'll probably get this back out on the courts for display for the first time in many many years if you want to turn around you'll see here's our shoheen working trees we've got trees in development we got trees um, that we rotate and display you'll see quite a collection of olives um, these are trees i've used in some of my classes where i do a potting demonstration so some of these are, are just accumulating from that. Right here, you see a group of trees that Ray has planned for a swap out, probably on Tuesday. The gardens are closed on Tuesdays. So those are our days to really get in there and, and do some essential work. And uh, for our Shoheen, if you remember uh, the display area, these will, will be swapped out next Tuesday. Here's a tree I'd like to point out. 
we do have some very nice uh, cork oaks in our collection. And uh, this we acquired last year as a gift from uh, John Jackson down in uh, San Diego area. And the thing I'd like to point out, this is the front of this tree. The thing I'd like to point out about this is, um, again, beautiful corking, but the subtle movement, the delicious taper in this tree with no trunk chop. That is, that is truly remarkable when, when you see how beautiful this gentle taper with the movement and the flow is, and there's not a spot in that trunk where there was a big cut where you see a big rollover or a stub or anything. So the, the way this tree was developed, it, 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 again, you, that trunk is, is so desirable. And so what we're doing is we're working on a little branch refinement, little crown refinement in that structure, but really everything is, is, is to highlight this, this really stunning trunk in this tree. Now, um, on this side, we've got a couple of benches. Um, these are some of Mr. Che's Penching. Um, these are trees, like this group of trees, for example. He developed all this, these pieces in his yard. This was put together also in 2019 as a demonstration featuring a couple of Mr. Che's colleagues who had come from uh, China. And uh, they donated the pot, Che donated the trees. And again, this is uh, quite a, a spectacular demonstration. Um, as it gets refined, it will end up going out on the Penching courts. So you'll see we've got a couple things. Here's a, a pomegranate, pretty spectacular pomegranate. You notice that some of the Penching in here look a lot like bonsai. A lot of uh, the trees you'll see in here actually started as bonsai, this one in particular. This was started by Ernie Kuo. And he was one of John Naka's uh, uh, primary students, uh, an incredible bonsai artist. And um, uh, you can see that, that, you know, this is a pretty classic Naka style bonsai in terms of its proportion and all that stuff. So um, even though it's part of our Pen Ching collection, it definitely has more bonsai characteristics. And there's a couple of those that are like that. If you look right through here, you'll see uh, an evergreen pear Again, that was one of Ernie Kuo's trees, and um, faithful flower in the spring, a beautiful trunk texture, nice big massive tree, but again, it's clearly a bonsai, uh, you know, not, not quite a penching in this case. Spectacular tree, though. So we'll come down here a little bit. Again, another set of uh, Chase trees. So these last two benches, um, We've got some things here. The last bench, we have a reverse osmosis watering system uh, that we're able to uh, utilize for things like camellias, azaleas, and maples. So um, uh, the reverse osmosis system is back there. So again, uh, the, one of my goals is to rebuild the azalea collection here because again, it, uh, with, with good water, we should be able to do better with that. We've had some in the past, but yeah, that, that would be one of my goals. This bench, we've got a, a mix of things. You'll see a lot of junipers in here. There's, we're, we are keeping some of our junipers in what we call an old school approach. So in Southern California, um, we had a lot of our trees over the years that were just coming hard pruned pretty constantly and then pinch constantly. So what happened is our, many of our San Jose's and our Perstratas, what they did is they just kept on producing this juvenile growth. And so that was the way bonsai was done for quite a while. Now, contemporary bonsai encourages uh, trees like this to allow their foliage to extend out, to elongate, and hopefully convert to a softer texture, a more mature foliage. If you look at this tree here, this has done that conversion. So this tree, we're, we're turning into a slightly more contemporary style with the way we're gonna lay this out. But this guy, it tends to react when we come in the heat. And so it always has kind of a mix of juvenile and mature. So this is a tree we said, you know, there's nice old trunk, classic Southern California old style bonsai. Let's keep it as an old style bonsai with padding and stuff. Again, that's the way the public learns, um, you know, that there are different approaches to the art. But you'll see on this bench, we've got a couple of trees that 
you know, we're maintaining in that old school look. And when you look at the trunks and the bark, you can see they're pretty old bonsai too. The textures are, are pretty stunning on those. See our fertilizer tea bags. You didn't see those in the nursery and the display courts. I don't like to show that kind of stuff, but in the nursery here we'll we'll do our fertilizer and we use tea bags just to keep our soils clean and unclogged. If you look across, you'll see a little azalea color at the time being. You'll see a little camellia over there in flower. Nothing spectacular enough to put on display. Some bougainvillea were, you know, working to tighten up. So again, kind of more of a working portion of our collection here. And uh, if you pan back this way, again, you'll see some more of, of, of chaise trees. Uh, again, some have classic pinching, like again, that elm there. That's one of Che's uh, development. But then if you look at this, again, has almost more bonsai qualities. Well, the reason it does is because, again, this was an Ernie Quo tree originally. And so once they start as a bonsai, it's difficult to convert them to classic Pen Ching structure. So doesn't mean they're not nice trees, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've got a few trees in here, again, that were recent gifts that we're trying to refine. So here's another cork oak, more compact, beautiful trunk, again, no trunk chop, but uh, we're, we're trying to fill our branching out here. So again, um, stuff in progress. You might not see some of these trees on display for a couple of years, but again, it's good to have uh, elements that are in process so you have some future or two too. Um, that's the thing that makes our, our art unique, is we also have to deal in that fourth dimension of time. We also have to always have to be looking ahead. We always have to be kind of planning. Where's our tree going? Where's it going to be in a couple of years? And um, in days of, of COVID and stuff, when there's so little to look forward to, um, this gives us something to look forward to. So I um, uh, hope everybody's doing okay. Hope you're having a, a good day. Hope you've enjoyed our tour. And uh, here at the 2021 Bonesiathon virtual experience. Um, be safe, take care, and we'll see you out there.